this new group that has penetrated the northwestern part of the country, known as the Lakurawas, they are affiliated to ISIS in the Sahelian region. And it is indeed the first attempt of the Sahelian jihadist, jihadist to have a foothold in our country. Like I mentioned earlier, they were kept at bay all this while when we had joint cross-border operations with the Republic of Niger. However, when the coup took place in Niger, they took advantage of the breakdown in cooperation between both countries, which has now been restored. They took advantage of that breakdown to make incursions through the difficult terrain to remote locations around the outskirts of the northwestern part of our country, some of those uh, states. We know exactly where they are as I speak to you. Now, what was and what are the issues? When they came in, the locals recognized that they had strangers in their midst. Recognizing that you have strangers in your midst, the proper thing to do is to let the authorities know. But they embraced them thinking that they were going to sort of protect them from terrorists or whatever and allow them to settle in and spread their ideology. Having settled in and gained a foothold, they started imposing certain levies and whatever on the people. And the people now started like, oh, what's going on here? It was at that point that they felt the need to notify. That is not the time to notify. You notify immediately, you see something strange. So, winning this war clearly without the support of the people is impossible. So I continue to say that and beg on Nigerians to help us to help you. Now that we know, we're finding them, we're flushing them out. They came in just the same way we have something like Boko Haram. They're telling you the men should keep long beard. They're telling you the women must wear hijab and whatever. They're telling you the men must have jump up trouser. And so many other things like that. So they are easy to find based on their traits. So we are, we are on that situation. That's the much I can say right now. The issue of surrendering. I have indeed said that the terrorists are left with the option of surrender or die on the battlefield. There is no third option. And when I say or speak about surrender, surrender is an act of war. In war, there is a thing known as surrendering. When the enemy comes and raises his hand up and drops his weapon, it is a crime to shoot at him. And we are a professional force. They have indicated that they want to surrender. They are afraid if we will take them out in the process and we have assured them that we'll create a safe corridor 
for them to surrender, drop their arms, and we will receive them. After all, we are receiving surrender terrorists in the Northeast already. So we are not new to it. To the issue of PTSD, because that question has to do with PTSD. I tell you that our troops have been exposed to battle for upwards of 10 years. When you have been in battle for that long, the issue of PTSD is not far-fetched. Recognizing this, the military has put in place PTSD management centers to help such personnel who might be suffering from it. That is to say that we recognize it exists. When you recognize a problem, it is half solved. We recognize it as it exists, and we are doing something about it. We call on citizens to help us too. We have experts out there. If there are things that you think we should do or should know more about, help us to get better at it. That's the much I can say for now. Have I answered all the questions or have I missed anything? All right.